Welcome back, my name is Matt, this is Hidden Light, and today we're going on a field trip! Because I can't stand to hang out here all day. And um, this time of year in Flagstaff is what we call the monsoon season. And it rains pretty much every day, we get beautiful cloud formations, we're talking like great big cumulonimbus, uh, thunderstorms, all kinds of beautifulness. So we're going to take a little trip. Uh, I'm getting two birds stoned at once here because I have not been to the Grand Canyon since winter and I have not been on a proper length motorcycle ride since like last year. So <laughs> um, I'm going to ride a motorcycle and y'all are going to come along with Alex in his Jeep and we're going to go hang out at the Grand Canyon and I have two goals. Goal one is some sort of uh, mostly reasonable landscape, probably black and white, uh, that I can print both horizontal and vertical. So I'm going to shoot it with being able to flop that around in mind. I'm not sure if that's going to be like a panorama or a shot that I can crop, you know, just whatever. So we're going to bring Blasphemy, a digital camera as well as the F6. And I've got a mount for my GoPro now, so I can mount the GoPro on the camera that I'm shooting so you can see what I see as I see it. The other thing that we're trying to do is get some B-roll for a workshop that we're building. Um, I'm gonna just leave that right there. But uh, generally speaking, we're gonna be doing a more workshoppy style stuff in really small quantities. Uh, uh, yeah where you can like go shoot and then do the post-processing and then make a print all in the same workshop, which I think is really rare. So we've got a hour-ish long drive to the canyon and then we'll putz around. I mean, it's like a time. My watch doesn't turn on. It's like whatever, 10 something. So we're not gonna get morning light, but the theory is because monsoons build in the afternoon, we'll be able to go hang out, watch the clouds build, get some good photos, maybe stay for sunset, and then come back. I am bringing with me Kentmere 100. I would bring HP5, but somebody bought it all. So apparently we're out of stock and I'm not allowed to have any. So I'm gonna bring Kentmere, which is a close second for me for black and white film stocks. It's reasonably grainy, which I actually prefer. Um, you know, it's weird. I can't even remember the last time I went on a photo trip like this, like a Grand Canyon visit with only 35 millimeter. I've been using big cameras for so long. So I'm actually also gonna bring a third camera. This is my little baby one that I keep in my beer koozie, I mean, um, pouch, camera pouch, but, um, yeah, anyway, let's, uh, less talking and more motorcycling, let's go.
here we are, hanging out at Moran Point. Um, we're here like way too early. The clouds exist, but they're not really forming up the way that I want them to on this side of the canyon just yet, and, and they may not. Uh, the clouds on the other side are incredible and gorgeous, and I've already done a few safety shots, both of out here and of the other direction, just to see what I can see. But at this point, we're basically down to hang. So, you know, have a snack, grab a journal, read a book, like, enjoy this vista. Most of the people who come to the Grand Canyon will show up, snap a selfie, and leave. Like, total experience near the rim of minutes. And I find that kind of like surfing, you have to show up and hang out and just let it exist and, and let your body absorb it. And the longer you do that, the better the experience is. So I'm hanging out. Every time I see a cool pattern of dappled light behind me in the canyon, grab a camera, snap a few shots. I'm chilling pretty hard. Okay, this spot is nice, and actually if we stay here very much longer, I might just end up taking a nap. So, I'm just gonna angle my body for the wind. Uh, we're gonna keep trying different locations and see if we can, by any chance, find something better. Because uh, we might as well, we've got time to kill, so. And the clouds still aren't doing what I want. So we'll go explore a little. What are you gonna do? You know, we tried. We've waited here for two and a half hours. The clouds have completely disappeared from over the canyon. The wind has really kicked up and it's blowing dust everywhere in the canyon. So it's hazy, no longer cloudy, which means the sky is no longer interesting. I think it's time to call it. I think we've, we've given this shot what we can today. I got some good shots earlier maybe, but I mean, we could wait around here for another three or four hours and not get any more clouds or anything to see. So, screw it. I'm out. Okay, so it is an indeterminate amount of time later. I've got my scans back and I've culled them from the better part of however many rolls I shot, three rolls that day, down to like a small selection, just to see. So what I wanna do now is kinda of go through it, see if there's anything good. I haven't zoomed in, grain checked, none of that yet, and see if there's anything worth massaging into a nice print. Might or might not be, so we'll see. So let's just jump into this and uh, do it. I'm going to start this off with just like a general crop just to get us, you know, less into the film border weirdness and more into like pictures real quick here. 
bloop, 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 bloop. And that's a real quick and dirty crop, but it gets us most of the way to where we're trying to go. So, okay, so I've got some detail. I'm gonna rotate these as we go through just to kind of see. I did shoot a bunch of stuff on a digital camera, right? I've not included those here. Uh, mostly I was using the digital camera to shoot panoramas, which I'm gonna then have Lightroom stitch into something slightly more usable. What I really wanted, going back looking through these images, was a much wider lens. The 28 is just not wide enough for what I was trying to do here. The 15 really would have been more better in a lot of ways. Ugh, looks like shit. You ever look at your pictures and go, gross, what was I thinking? Yeah, me too. Ooh, look, there's Alex. Hero shot right there. Out of focus, like a boss. You can see how windy it was. <sighs> we really didn't have the clouds that I was looking for. We had half the clouds I was looking for. Ooh, wow, color, holy smokes. Say what you will, the new Negative Lab Pro, the V3 point whatever, does a pretty darn good job with color. Like, this is a little saturated, but it feels good. Like, I can see what I'm trying to do in some of these, but it just... not really coming together the way that I was hoping. Oh, that one got scanned backwards. Nice. Um, which means that a lot of those probably got scanned backwards. It happens. Let's see. Just, just kind of, I like to go through stuff more than once to give myself multiple impressions of what's going on, kind of remind myself of what I have and therefore what of it might be worth anything. I think that might be one of the stronger ones so far. I like that one too. All right, here we go. Filters, rated, number three. So, three stars and higher is kind of where I will typically start the real post-production. <laughs> you know, not just like a crop whatever, but like, okay, let's see what this image can actually do. Um, R for crop, all right, let's see what we see. A little bit more cloud here. I'm gonna give myself a black border to work with just to see where the edge of the file really is. Maybe make it like a little more fucking useful. I think this one probably has some of the most potential. So at that point, you pull it into Photoshop and really see what's up. <clears throat> oh, look, I got a new install of Photoshop. Thanks. Cool. And then you just basically start uh, seeing what there is to see here. I want to see what I have, and then I can see, ooh, yeah, come on, I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to do that, I'm not used to working with the trackpad, so like, you know, that's, that's life. See what we can see here. Take 
Actually, I like a lot about that. So I'm gonna keep that pretty much everywhere for a minute. I've been getting a lot of light piping recently and some other people have noticed that on this same film stock which is interesting um, so it could be that I just treat my film like an idiot I mean that definitely happens that's part of it <laughs> but it could also be something else going on You know what would make this image way more dynamic and c completely blaspheme? <sighs> you're gonna hate this. I can tell that you're gonna hate it. Everyone hates it when I do this. Ooh, that's kinda cool. It's a little far, but it's kind of interesting. Oh, I like that. I know it's blasphemous, um, and I'm okay with that. I'm into it. What I could then do is grab a brush with like a reasonably low opacity thing and just like chill it out a little bit at a time, especially some of this weirdness up here, I don't love all of that. And like this is a little harsh, so I might just chill that out a little bit. Can always put it back later, you know? Like these two dots in here are the worst, and I hate them. So we're just gonna omit them entirely. Whap. Nice. And then you could like soften out some of the edges a little if you really felt like it. Uh, black. That looks like shit. That's starting to get somewhere. I need more. I'm trying to. It's not a touch screen. <laughs> I need more contrast down by the river. You know what's funny is I'm basically recreating a version of this image that I did in the past. Um, which honestly was kind of part of the point, but... <laughs> uh, let's see, curves. Ooh, yeah, and then... Yeah! Yeah, of course that's way too far. So you invert it and then you start brushing in the good parts. Like really show this off. Helps if you use the correct foreground color. Really kind of drawing the attention to the, you know, river, the thing that forms the Grand Canyon. I love this shape too, it's lovely. Now we're starting to get somewhere. Um, let's see, put that up here. Ooh, that's much better. Before and after. It's a little heavy handed maybe. Back that down a little. Rivera. What's this? I don't know what that is. It's kind of like a base contrast layer. Just keep on keeping on. This is gonna be difficult.
problem with film grain and high contrast is by the time you start forcing it, you start to really hurt for it. This looks like shit now, and that's on purpose. It's okay. We're just gonna back this down in a minute. Nope, don't want that. It's kind of our background layer shadows. I don't hate that. That's not bad. It, um, it does a couple of things. One, we're compensating for the fact that we didn't have the clouds that we wanted. Two, it gives me a reason to have a bunch of highlight on this cliff, if I think, with I think, which I think gives it a little bit more depth. I think there's some fine tuning that needs to be done to this psychotic lens flare that we've got in here. Uh, and I could probably level this horizon just a skosh. I mean, it doesn't, two things. One, I suck at level horizons. And two, this cliff is much closer to us than the far side of the canyon. So it may actually be level, um, but it might not be also. So we can get rid of this for a second. C for crop in Photoshop. Um, we can just take a look at this and see what happens if we were to level that just a little. I'm going to lose some stuff. Now I know that I could do some generative AI shenanigans. Um, I have zero faith that generative AI is going to match my film grain. So we can try that later. Mm. Yeah. I don't think that's going to be the answer for right now. Um, and if I start to rotate this, I start to really lose a lot of the interesting details, which is fine. I can like pano the shit out of it. I don't hate that. I don't love it. We're going to not delete these and just see what happens. What do you think? Put your answer down in the comments below. I think I probably need to keep that. Which is annoying. C for crop. And it's got to come in from the side a little here from what I've done. I'm okay with that for now. I think this is probably the point at which I would say, okay, I need to take a mental break from this image. I should probably print a copy just to see what's up. And uh, I should probably save it. <laughs> um, and like, honestly, to get one shot that's half decent like this, with or without the lens flare, regardless of what you think about my shenanigans, is pretty good for a day spent hanging out on a motorcycle, spent chilling out of the Grand Canyon. You know, like, I'm into it. So we will put this on the to print list. I will not have you sit through the rest of me editing some of this stuff because I think that's really the one that I'm most focused on. I'll go through the rest of these real quick myself, see if I have anything that I'm really interested in. And if that's the case, then we'll print one of those as well. But this is really it. So we'll, 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 we'll iterate from here in the lab, probably in piezography. Probably in piezography. That's a fun one. See how that feels. I may need to do this as an inkjet just to get these blacks to go deep enough. We'll see. Anyway, uh, to the lab. Okay, it's time to make some prints. Uh, we're going to use this as the, an opportunity to do a comparison piezography versus inkjet. Uh, because we can and because I'm not sure which way will look better for this specific image. Um, I've got it pulled up here. I did have to make some adjustments from the laptop I was using last time, which is uh, the Apple display, and it was on a reasonably high brightness, and it's not calibrated 
to my calibrated monitors. If you look, you can see it starts sort of flat and dark and like no real highlights, which I would have known if I had looked at the histogram, but I didn't. And so I've given it a little bit more life, a little bit more brightness, just brought the white point in basically. Uh, we're gonna do a reasonably warm piezography print and we're gonna do a sort of standard black and white inkjet print, compare the two and see which we like. I don't know, it's a good iterative process and it's a good thing to show you people. So have a little bit of coffee here. We tried to do a really bitchin' like slow-mo coffee intro a la Peter McKinnon. And then the light we were using sort of stopped being a light. So like, what do you do, you know? Ah, no bulb, that would explain it. Okay, unplug, step one. Oh, it's a frosted bulb. If I start a fire, you can laugh. Is that bright enough for slow-mo, you think? It's not for you, it's for me. Just like this picture, but you get to hang out and watch. So, um, one of the things I do recommend people do, just as a general exercise, is like hang out in Photoshop, editing on a grayish background, and then when you're ready to print, push it to white, which you can do by selecting custom and then choosing the color, just to see what the white paper border will look like around this image. Not a lot of highlight, which is okay. I want this image to be a little darker. I'm fine with that, uh, I think. So we'll start one. We'll start with the inkjet and then we'll do also a piezo. So I'm proofing a little bit bigger than I sort of normally would, which is cool. We're making these 24 by nearly 16. I think this image is gonna be one of those that I want kind of big. And so I wanna proof it kind of big, just to get a feel for what's happening. Um, I'm gonna do a 70% warm, 30% neutral print for the piezography, and then the inkjet will be just straight black and white. That is not the whole picture. That is part of a picture. You know what we do for these? Yeah, it's missing a great big section of it already. It's cutting off like the frickin' top half inch. Print settings. That's better. This is why piezography is better. It just does what it's told. And it actually looks really good from here. My current theory is that Photoshop is doing something wrong. So instead of using Photoshop to print the file, I'm using um, print tool. Uh, I really hope this doesn't work because that would mean that Photoshop broke their printing thing. Dialogue? Process? I don't want it to work. Oh, good news, it didn't. You ever have some days where it's just like, there's no reason this shouldn't work? <laughs> Me too. Not only that, but there's a huge color shift in here from black and white to magenta. Got it. Don't know. Don't know why I didn't want to print 24 inches, but 23 and a half is fine. Oh, 
a lot better than I thought I would, actually. It looks green to me. Look green to you. Good starting point. Surprisingly, or maybe not surprisingly, I much prefer the piezography print. Sort of hands down. Uh, it feels better. And not only that, the resolving detail that we're getting down in the corners where things get a little dark and heavy is drastically better in the piezography print. The inkjet, it just goes straight to black. Um, so, ugh, gross. <laughs> we're going to avoid that. I've also noticed that, we'll just zoom in a skosh, these are standing out pretty well, these sort of highlight areas in the piezography print, but I want them to be a bit more. So I'm going to dodge a bunch of this, that is to say, make lighter in darkroom speak. And I'm going to come in and just do some selective work on this sort of dappled light that we have throughout the image, brighten a bunch of sections, darken a bunch of shadows, and see if I can get that to pop a little bit more to really showcase what that light felt like. Uh, yeah, but good first proof. I don't see any like major issues. I also like that the matte paper with the lower contrast chills out the heft of this grain a little bit. So, dodging and burning, here we go. Burn, baby, burn. Should I pull this down and we'll go take it and see how, how, how far, how too far I went? How far is too far? Too far is the answer. That's how far. Like 15% too far. I wonder if I sharpened this. You do a push in on that, call it good. <laughs> 